thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go. Report number 28230 Class Alpha. Close daylight sighting and multiple incidents near a home north of Helena. Submitted by witness on Sunday, September 12, 2010. Season, Fall. State, Montana. County, Lewis and Clark County. Nearest town, north of Helena, Montana. Observed. The other morning I was letting our dogs out to go to the bathroom. It was quite early in the morning and the sun was just coming over the mountain. I opened the back door and let the dogs do their morning business. About 50 feet from our back door was a large, hairy, man-like being. The dogs saw it as well and came running back into the house. I stood still on the stairs watching it. I think I was in shock by what I saw. The animal then turned and looked right at me and let out this scream. It was the most frightening thing I have ever encountered. The yell struck every nerve in my body. I was so scared that it instantly made me cry. I felt like I was getting this fight or flight response. Never have I been this scared in the woods. We get to see many different animals here in Montana, but nothing like this. The animal was about seven to eight feet tall and had brownish black hair covering its body. The hair was probably about four to six inches long. I would guess that it had to weigh 500 plus pounds. When it let out that yell at me, I got the feeling that it was angry that I saw it. The face was like that of an ape, but with very human features. I stood frozen to the stairs as it moved off down the hill. The experience probably lasted only a couple of minutes. It walked on two legs and was no bear. Never have I been so scared by something in the woods that I have cried. I have come face to face with bear and elk and mountain lion. I was scared in those situations too, but not like this. When it let out that scream was what really touched a fear in me. I don't know that I am able to do justice to be able to tell you the way I felt at that moment. Also noticed, as it turned and when it walked away, I could see the muscles moving under the hair. It was well developed. I also think it might have been a girl because of the pecs or breast on the chest. The face did not have hair on it and was blackish brown skin. It also had very human qualities to its face. It seemed very well developed. Other Witnesses My partner heard the yell from bed. He just rolled over and went back to sleep because we hear it so much up here. Other Stories A few weeks ago, a friend of ours was staying at our home. He was sleeping out on the couch in the living room. The windows were open because it was a warm night. He got to hear it scream as well. It scared him so bad that he slept with a loaded gun by his side for the rest of the evening. He left early the next morning. We have been hearing this thing up here for years. We have been laughing and joking that it is a Bigfoot. Never did I think I was going to hear and see one so close. I, I, I know it was no bear but a Bigfoot. I am as sure of this as I am my own name. We get to hear it on a pretty regular basis. We have lived over here for about six years and have been hearing it all this time. We just never really knew what it was. Also, when this thing is in our area, our dogs will not go outside. They have chased bear off the property, treed a mountain lion, but whatever this is, it scares the heck out of them. 
Also, the local Native Americans have talked about this thing for years. They call it Wendago, and when in the woods won't let their children go out at night. A couple of last remarks. There have been a couple of nights where we have had small rocks thrown on our tin roof of our home. We also get to hear what sounds like a small tree or log or limb being hit against another tree. I might add that the dogs will not go out during these times either. Whatever it is, it has scared them enough at one time or another for them to not want to go near it. Time and conditions? It was very early morning, like I said earlier. The sun was just coming over the mountain. The sun was hitting the hair on the animal and gave it a brownish-black look to it. The weather was pretty clear and cool, typical early fall morning. Environment? It was standing up by our wellhead in the backyard, just beyond our boat. The trees are a red pine and spruce. We are on a mountainside with shale and dirt as a base with wild grass and shrubs. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Jim H. After speaking to the witness on the phone, I decided to make a trip out to Montana to see the location firsthand. We left Minnesota on 9:24:10 and arrived in Helena by the afternoon of 9:25:10. After setting up camp at a local campground, we contacted the witness and asked if it was okay to come up to their home before the sunset. He said he would be home and come on over. We met the family and were told a little bit about the history of activity in the area. The witness and his family as well as friends have heard different vocalizations pretty consistently over the years. They really had never known what made those sounds but always joked that they were their Bigfoot as they have lived in the Montana outdoors for years and have a very good knowledge of the wildlife in the area. They have encountered just about all of the animals that live there during their regular hiking trips to explore the numerous caves and lava tubes in the area. The vocalizations they have heard varied from long deep howls to chatter described as having an oriental accent. Many times they would also hear what sounded like chopping of wood sounds at the same time but they really never gave it a lot of attention as they just figured it was something they had just not witnessed in person. They told us of a couple of previous encounters of which the first happened in the fall of 2007. One of the witnesses' sons, who has a slight mental disability, had placed some food out on the open porch to see if he could lure in some UFOs as he and his friends had been talking about them. So he placed some bacon, granola, and other things in the cat's bowl and placed it in the front corner of the railings. He then waited inside a large picture window on their couch. Sometime during the night he had awoke to some noise on the porch. He stood up and started to walk to the window when he seen something crouched down, back facing the window, over the cat's dish. It apparently heard him or sensed him because it turned around, stood up, took one step toward the window, and raised one hand as an Indian does when they say how. The son got scared and ran to his parents' room and woke one parent, who ran down the hall to the front of the house. As they got to the front of the house, it jumped over the railing to the ground. It happened so quick that the parent did not get a good look at what it was. But the son describing it as being around six and a half to seven feet tall, lanky build, with long arms. A head appeared to be sitting on its shoulders. He did describe the face as having big eyes, a protruding brow ridge, flattened nose with large nostrils. His parents were not so convinced and dismissed the occurrence as just part of his imagination, even though one of them seen something. I might add that the front porch had no steps on it at the time and that the floor of the porch is approximately five and a half to six feet from the ground in the middle. 
Add the three feet of the railing that this creature had jumped over when it fled makes for an eight and a half to nine foot jump. Considering the hard packed ground in the area, that is a feat for anyone or thing. <laughs>